Good morning and welcome to The Core Connection. I'm Mira Rubin here with you on Enlightened World Network. And today's topic is Ikigai. I think I'm pronouncing it right, but I'm not certain. Um, and it means um, finding one's purpose, really. Um, it, it is um, reason for being is actually the, the um, translation of it. And we were talking about purpose as an organizing principle yesterday. And so this arose, just showed up on, on my, um, in my browser somehow yesterday. So it was so spectacular that I thought we could have a conversation about it today. So good morning, good morning, Rosalyn. Welcome. It's great to start the morning with you as always. And with everyone else who's joining us, welcome, welcome, welcome. And we're going to continue our conversation about purpose, the power of purpose, and specifically Ikigai, which is, I have to say I never heard of, but it just really um, brings together the things that I have spoken about in terms of purpose. So I, I think it'll be interesting. Good morning. Good morning, Bernadette. Welcome. So good to have you here with us this morning. And uh, before we get, yeah, right? Rosalind says, what a powerful word to mean all those things. Wait till you see. It's very cool. So um, before we get started, let's take a minute or two to get present. Let's take a deep breath in through your nose and hold it. And imagine clean, crisp oxygen flooding your lungs, filling your bloodstream, nourishing all your cells all your organs, bringing vital life energy to your body and being. And as you exhale, exhale any tension, stress, negativity, fatigue. And now let's take another deep breath in through your nose and hold it. This time, imagine brilliant bright light lighting you up from the inside out, illuminating, electrifying, and energizing all your cells, all your molecules, all your electrons, creating a brilliant beam of light and energy from your heart out into the world. And as you exhale, exhale any remaining tension, stress, negativity, fatigue. And now let's press our palms together, vigorously rub your hands together to feel the friction, the temperature, the pressure, all that sensation, the tickling and tingling when you stop and allow all that sensation to bring you present right here, right now, into this remarkable physical form that enables you to experience life. Welcome, welcome. So Ikigai, um, I'm, I'm actually going to share my screen. Um, let's see how this goes. I think I am going to share my screen. I want to um, show you Uh, give me a second, because I want to put this diagram up. It's so cool. I think it'll be a pretty awesome thing. And there's a test um, that you can take on a website, a free test, one of these sort of personality test kind of things um, that helps you discover what your icky guy is. Um, and it may be, it, you know, it's interesting. I'll share what I got as a result, which was, I thought it was really, really interesting, actually. But um, here, if you notice these big circles, there's the pink circle of what I love, the um, blue circle of what the world needs, the orange circle of what I'm good at, and the green circle of what I can get paid for. And where all these where all these intersect is the result that gives you your icky guy. So um, where what I love intersects with my passion, my personality, my mission, all of that is coming together here with my career, my vocation, my 
personality, which is also archetype, my profession, my weirdness, which we talked about yesterday is like, what is the thing that, that you've been criticized for, um, you know, that is your unique weirdness. And all of that comes together in the middle, which is pretty, pretty cool, I think. So um, I, I, let me give you the link also. Hold on if I can see if I can paste that in. Um, I, it's called ikigaitest.com, I believe. Let me see if I can paste it in here. Nope. Let's see. Let me get it for you. Uh, so let's see if I can put it in here. There you go. I don't know if you can see it. It's I-K-I-G-A-I-T-E-S-T dot com, ikigaitest.com. And um, so it's a combination or the convergence of what you love, what you're good at, what the world needs, which was our what breaks your heart and what you can be paid for. So it was really interesting to me that um, my tests came up with um, multimedia artists and animators, which is really, really funny because um, I, I've told you I went through a period of crisis where I had decided where, oh, thank you, Rosalyn. Thank you for putting it in the chat. I put it in, but I don't know if it showed up. Um, anyway, I had gone through a just devastating crisis and I had, I was going to kill myself. And um, I had a moment of grace that where of awareness that's a, where I recognized, you know what, I need to get some help. So I, I went to counseling and, uh, oh, okay, thanks, Rosalyn, I appreciate that. Um, anyway, Rosalyn said the comment showed up. Anyway, um, as a result of that, I gave myself permission to go back to school. And I went back to school to be a multimedia artist and, and animator. And that's what my icky guy came up as which is very very interesting so you know i think i might maybe i'll share the screen again so that you can see this so you get an idea of how it works um i'm just going to zoom out a little bit so you can see the thing in a second um I, it's just fascinating it, you know we all love to learn more about ourselves right um but having it having it just encapsulated this way so simply um it's it's very interesting so i'm just going to share the screen again if you guys let's see here we go so this is so interesting um, so here is the multimedia artists and animators, because it didn't it didn't bring up transformational coach necessarily, but it says uh, my personality is thoughtful artist, my career art and design, and I had an 18 year career, well longer than that actually, more than a 20 year career in um, in computer uh graphics and uh, teaching teaching computer graphics and I, I had gone back to school for computer animation and multimedia which is pretty pretty wild so um art and design is very much a part of what i've done in my life my archetype mediator who enjoys being independent independence is a really big thing for me uh, my weirdness, relaxed independence. There's the independence again. My passion, 
performing creative activities such as art, theater, crafts, dance, music, or creative writing. So I do consider myself a bit of a writer. I went to art school. I went to um, follow-up school with multimedia. I, um, I consider in terms of my values, creativity is one of my foremost values and essential it's essential to my life. I need to be able to be creative. Um, my profession is making my own decisions and working at my own pace, which you know, I think I've said to you all, I, I'm pretty much unemployable because I need to work on my own and, and do things the way that I wanna do things. I mean, I can collaborate with people, but um, I'm not good working for somebody else. I'm good working with people. And I'm good at interpreting the meaning of information for others. So I've al always said that I'm a translator. I can translate compact, complex concepts into understandable form. And I did technical writing for a number of years and I wrote a couple books on software. And so isn't this interesting? Analyzing data or information, provide consultation and advice to others, assisting and caring for others. There's the coaching piece, right? Um, I love having a good time and enjoying myself while performing a given task. Um, and my mission is studying, understanding, and solving math or science problems, whether theoretical or technical. It's not so much math and science, but consciousness, right? But solving issues, looking at, looking at our world and how to create a better world. The world needs communications and media, history and archaeology, fine arts, economics, and accounting. It seems like that's a whole blend, which is very much my approach to things is um, looking to find the unity among all these different components in the world. So it's interesting to me that it, it nailed what I did for a big, big part of my life. Uh, and it alluded to the other things that I do. Um, so it could be a very interesting tool for you to check it out. Um, Bernadette says, thanks to Rosalind for sharing the name. Yeah. Um, oh, fun, Bernadette. Awesome. Um, Bernadette's making birthday cake for an 18 and an eight-year-old. Anyway, um, what what fun is this? You know, and the reason for being our sense of purpose really truly does need to integrate all those points. Um our weirdness or our personality, um, the things we love to do, the thing that we're also good at, because we can love to do things that we're not good at. And um, what hopefully what we can be paid for so that we can make a living, so that we can make a living doing what we love. And uh, also, what does the world need? So in terms of transformation, you know, what, what breaks your heart? What is it that the world needs that you can, that you bring forward uniquely with all of your gifts? So I just thought it was so cool to see this um, encapsulated so elegantly. Um, and there, if you do a search for Ikigai, uh, you'll find a variety of different diagrams that delve a bit more deeply into the different intersections of things and, and what the emotional component of those elements might be. And, um, I, th I really do believe when we're looking at purpose that the thing that makes it work is the, the part of what the world needs. 
to be stepping into this higher space. So Bernadette says, um, it's a real eye opener for showing up meant to be on a path. Yeah, yeah. We, we each have our uniqueness that we came here to express. And um, this is, you know, this is just a visual, not just, but um, the questions that they ask are really interesting. I think it's interesting that they don't look at, um, you know, I, I didn't really see much in the way of sustainability questions or unconventional kinds of um, professions, although animator might be somewhat unconventional. It's funny because um, I one of the, well, the books that I wrote were books on a software called InDesign, and it was the, both the books were about the um, uh, animation capabilities of that application, which um, was pretty cool, actually, and also creating ebooks, electronic books. So it, it, I was fascinated by how um, accurate the uh, assessment was, although not complete, it was accurate. And um, nice to also have the confirmation to see, you know, that I've been on a path of alignment. But I think that I think that you can look at the things that you've been drawn to in your life, the the jobs that you've done in your life that um, that sing to certain parts of yourself. So Bernadette, um, <laughs> Bernadette says you have an interesting life you've led. Um, hey, why not? <laughs> I I feel like I've lived I've lived multiple lives in this life for sure. I've reinvented myself multiple times and I invite you to know that you can do the same. You know, I'm in another this is another period of reinvention right now. Um with the past several years and um developing uh sustainability now started in 2017 and the coaching started 2018 or 2019 in terms of a full term full time career and um we we always have the opportunity to be reinventing ourselves and as long as we're alive you know we get to we get to follow our hearts um, or rise to the place where we have the courage to do so. And um, I remember I went to art school and when I went to art school, I felt like a kid in a candy shop because there were so many things to do, so many things to try and I wanted to try everything. and. As a result of my varied interests, I was called a dilettante, uh, a um, jack of all trades, master of none, because I had all these interests. And the thing is, interestingly, that through that diversification, it has given me a broader perspective a, a broader view of potential and possibility than I would have had had I not had all of that exposure. So it gives me understanding, while not necessarily a developed expertise, but it gives me understanding of how lots and lots of things work. And also a, a, an expertise in a number of different areas where I've um, had the opportunity to delve more deeply. 
so what what is life if it isn't a playground you know what is what's the point of living if it isn't to experience i mean i think that's a really worthwhile question for us to look at when we when we have a dream and then subvert it you know or don't give ourselves permission to explore that dream bernadette says exactly and i love playgrounds so i mean this is what a playground what a playground what what a what an opportunity to explore so many things and experience so many things you know we start our day together when with the um centering exercise and bringing ourselves present to this physical form that enables us to experience life we also we often uh interact with our body as if it's an enemy um you know where we're critical of it and we're um talking about its limitations or its faults rather than being gratitude being grateful for the fact that this is the vehicle through which we experience life truly truly and um you know whatever shape our body is it's how we are alive it's how we get to play on the playground and um there's such a richness to that perspective, I think, in in that we get to experience all of it. You know, part of the playground's not just exploring all different things, but but experiencing all different things, which includes experiencing all different emotions. It includes experiencing um all different physical sensations. It it, it includes experiencing all kinds of different people. Rosalyn says, tools to elevate our perspective to the truth in our hearts. I love that, Rosalyn. Very, very true. The Ikigai diagram, the Ikigai test, you know, personality tests, um, archetype tests, things that that give us an opportunity to see ourselves perhaps more clearly so that we may connect more authentically, more deeply with what our soul is calling forward. Uh, Rosalyn said, I resonate with how do I provide this for one person and scale it from there. So that's an interesting, interesting consideration, you know, is scaling, right? The notion of scaling works on certain assumptions and the assumption typically is bigger is better and there's a certain level of efficiency um, that can be achieved when we scale something it makes it more efficient and this is these assumptions are not globally true and I think I think it's really important for us to be questioning assumptions because, you know, so Rosalind says, Mira, do you have any more info about tools for living into the emergent future? You mentioned doing something starting in February. Rosalind, you're the best. Thank you so much for asking. So it has morphed. Um, I, instead of calling it tools for living into the emergent future, which is really kind of the key to what it is, it's going to be a course about money. <laughs> We're going to use money as the focal point to be looking at these um, tools for living into the emergent future and our relationship with money. And um the reason i chose to do that is because i thought it might be a way to first of all i thought it would attract more people 
because who doesn't have stuff going on about money in some way, shape or form? And money brings up pretty much everything, you know, all of our sense of self and identity and attachment and and uh, values. And so a course about money is really a course about life and being and creating new perspectives to move into the emergent future. And um, so I've kind of repackaged it in my mind. And I, it, I know it doesn't have the same, for, for people that resonate with the idea of living into the emergent future, it may not have the same resonance in name. Um, I haven't come up with a good name about it for it yet, exactly. But it's not your typical course on abundance or, in fact, you know, I'm thinking I, I should do a survey to find out what people would be interested in uh, covering in the course. Because one of the things I was thinking of was creating an opportunity for people to workshop together, you know, to have work um work groups you know where people could say oh you know i really need some support and just sitting down and doing my invoicing and so people could gather into the to gather with each other so um yeah i have a lot of ideas about that and I, i'm going to probably be talking more about money and and the development of this over the next little while um so Rosalyn, I so appreciate you asking. And um, even though the, the title really called to you, I'm hoping that, um, that the course would still be of interest because it's really fundamentally working with all the same issues, just with a different locus. So um, Bernadette says, I think a scale is a predetermined of where things need to be or go. So, you know, we often, we, with scale, oh, Bernadette says into the abyss. Yeah, right? Um, when we talk about scale, this is the reason it brought up money also. Well, the scale is something that we look at when we talk about money as, you know, like if, if one is good, more is better. And uh, what I know about my core connection work is, I I don't think there's not a way that I know of to scale it, you know, other than seeing more people. Um, and so the 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 thing that I'm looking at is these group a group course to be able to share these tools for living into an emergent future. And um and creating our, recreating, re-imagining um, our relationship with our world, our material world, and uh, maybe reimagining money. What do you think of that title? Um, reimagining money and our relationship with it. What do you think about that? Um, Yeah, I, I, it's interesting, this I, notion of scaling, because when, when businesses get big, they change their fundamental nature. They have to, right? Um, when we expand, you know, let's say I'm a craftsperson and I'm paying all this love and attention to something that I'm creating, and then I start mass producing it, there's, there's a whole different um, process, there's a whole different energy to it. And those things that are being mass produced are not necessarily even of comparable energy or quality, right? It's not to say that some, some sense of scaling things isn't, isn't, doable but maybe we get to take different concepts different foundational principles to what that scaling is about to guide it 
in different ways, perhaps. So um, Bernadette says, reimagining your stepping stones. Um, I, I think that I definitely want to have money in the title because money is such a trigger for so many people. And, and it is part of my objective to get a lot of people that want to do this course, you know, so that we can be um, engaging together in a dynamic way and also making a greater impact. That's kind of where it's coming from. So it's um, intention meets marketing meets transformation, maybe. I'm not sure. Bernadette says, I like money. Well, that's awesome. Good. So hopefully you have a good relationship with it. Um, I, I, think, I think it's a good foil for exploration, discovery. Um, raising the vibration around money, Roslyn says. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Like cre creating a new, a new relationship with it, raising the vibration, our vibration in relation to it, um, raises its vibration. So I, it's funny. I um, let me see if I have this here. I have to check. Yeah. So this is here. I am thinking about this money course, and. Um, a friend of mine got me a far side calendar, and this was the very first thing on the calendar. And it says, oops, it says, Einstein discovers that time is actually money. So I thought it was pretty awesome because we often talk about time being energy. I mean, money being energy. And Einstein was all about energy and time and mass and space and all of that good stuff. So I thought that was such a, an interesting and timely uh, wink from the universe. So, oh, <laughs> Bernadette says, okay, I said to Bernadette, I hope you have a good relationship with money. Bernadette says, sure do, in one hand and out the other, LOL. Yeah, so that's that's kind of um, the relationship a lot of us have with money. And so, um, yeah, I think it'll be fun to explore that. So maybe you all will engage with me more deeply around money so that uh, we can help shape this course together. Anyway, that's it for today. I'm Mira Rubin. Check out Ikigai or ikigaitest.com, I-K-I-G-A-I. -I. Um, <laughs> Bernadette says, need the money to stop, uh, to stop. Need it to stop and show me its worth before getting in one hand and out the other. That's awesome. So anyway, I'm Mira Rubin. This is The Core Connection. I go live here each weekday morning on the Enlightened World Network Facebook page and YouTube channel at 9 a.m. Eastern. And I invite you to have uh, to check out the other awesome programming on Enlightened World Network, EWN, One with the Earth, Enlightened World Living. And until next time, so, so, so much love to you.